So, uh, so I'm, the I'm the last talk, I suppose. My name's Tom Brennan. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've been running this chapter for quite some time. Uh, I've been on the OWASP Board of Directors worldwide for about 10 years. Uh, and December 31st of this year is the, uh, is the end of my legacy, I suppose, with OWASP. Uh, the good part about that is that there's always things to do in this information security community. Uh, and what I'm here to talk about is sort of what I'm doing next. Uh, and I think it might be helpful for some of the people here in the room uh, to understand how this can help them. Um, to start off with, the OWASP Foundation uh, continues to do a phenomenal amount of work around the world with about 250 chapters. That 96 product, I think, was the, was the number that was used earlier before is active. But there's a lot of material out there and a lot of great people collaborating on, on different topics. And OWASP will continue and will always uh, have a place in my heart, uh, helping build it to where it is now, which is about a $2.5 million nonprofit, um, about 10 employees, and about 55,000 people around the world. Um, but one of the things I um, suffered uh, personally recently uh, was something called um, fatty liver, or cirrhosis. Uh, and in my world, it's hereditary, uh, non-alcoholic, even though I like to drink. The reality of it is, is that I kind of looked at this as a, as a model and said, hey, um, who am I going to go talk to about this? And who am I going to talk to about that is going to be a licensed, bar certified physician that hopefully can solve my problem, right? I mean, I think many of us in this space probably would do the same. So this sort of occurred to me, and I sort of looked back to what we have done, as well as my own career over the years, and said, you know what, I've gone through product certifications, I've gone through you know, uh, different things, and I kind of did that as a way to progress my career, and that's useful. But I looked for others in the space, and I came across Crest. Now, Crest is not the cavity creeps. These are different people. Uh, but Crest was actually an organization that was founded uh, out of the UK. It's very strong in Europe, uh, very strong in the, in the Asia Pac region, particularly Singapore. Uh, and, and focus here is really about a couple different groups. And these may resonate really, really well with the OWASP community. So the first group, of course, is penetration testing. Being able to conduct penetration testing in a repeatable methodology approach and being able to have a certifiable uh, uh, process that allows for repeatability. Now, for many of us in the room, we know pen testing is a little bit of a fine art, but we also probably would agree there is a methodology and approach which gives us consistency so we can demonstrate that there's a problem, be able to identify perhaps where the issues may be, and then report it in a format that's useful and digestible by the client. Right? So pen testing is partially an art form, but at the same time, it should be a repeatable methodology and approach that can be measured. Okay? The second group, threat intelligence. Being able to focus on, digest, use, and be able to consume or be able to provide. Uh, as mentioned before, OpenDXL is a good example of this. Um, Sticks, Taxi is a good example of this. Being able to utilize materials that is happening both within your organization as well as being able to manipulate the data for it to be useful, interpret it, and actually use it to help the business, let's say, be better. Okay? Third group, incident response, forensics. There's a woman here. Uh, I won't call her out, but this woman here in the room that's had a recent problem. And it comes down to having people that you can go to and trust, law enforcement you can work with and be able to provide a solution to a problem. And of course, it's important to be able to have that to also be repeatable, chain of custody, have a process when you look to work with a professional in this space. Lastly, uh, security architects. Those are other people here as well that talked about that, threat modeling, secure architecture, being responsible perhaps for the for the, for the blockchain uh, architecture for your business. Being responsible, perhaps, on how your application is going to be deployed and managed and measured. Again, Crest is focused in these different areas. Okay, I'm kind of reading through the material a little bit here, just to kind of give you a highlight. And then on the back of it, let's talk about the standards bodies. Let's talk about what's, what Crest has been involved in relative to the buying community, in particular, because everyone usually buys something. And if you see in RFPs, as an example, I've seen many of them over the years, I've actually enjoyed watching them uh, have nothing and then all of a sudden have things like the OWASP Top 10 or have things like you know, OWASP uh, Methodology and Testing Guide or have the ability to go ahead and provide uh, testing to a certain standard. And you'll now start seeing, and you, I, I've been seeing it for a couple years now, you'll see a requirement to have people that have CREST certification, accreditation, right? Looking for the physician that has the ability to be repeatable and a methodology and approach. This is not to say that any of us in the space that enjoy hacking or enjoy writing code are not as good as the guy next to you that has the certification. That's not what that's about. It's about being able to do trust and verify, especially on critical systems. Crest is real big around critical infrastructure, and it's real big around systems that mean things to human life. Right? So it's a little bit of an elevated area than say, let's go out and hack a web app today. Right? We do a lot with government and intelligence agencies, uh, NSA. 
uh, for those here in the US uh, as part of the Americas practice for Crest has now accepted Crest and will be working with Crest on some of the Intel work that they do and ensuring that not only the third party organizations that they contract with, but also their internal staff go through some of the Crest uh, uh, certifications that are as hands on. It's not a paper test, by the way. Um, then you have Crest for, for regulations for, regula for regulators, excuse me. So more and more when we have the, um, the NYS 500, right, when we have different regulatory regimes pushed down, SEC, et cetera, these are areas that they look to bodies for best practice. They look to, you know, trusted organizations like OWASP and others to say, what, is the, what are they saying about this particular problem and how do you comply with it? So Crest also has a lot of material that's been developed and created by its members to go ahead and push that forward. The last piece is training, both for academia as well as for commercial, right? People that actually want to go through Crest and have the training. And again, this is pretty big overseas, not so much here in the US. So the point that I wanted to make about Crest was kind of two things. Uh, first, professionally, uh, I was recently asked to be a part of the Crest organization. I was honored to be, to be nominated. Uh, and then after being nominated, uh, they have sort of like the member companies uh, get together and they look for establishing uh, directors or boards for the different groups. Uh, and um, Last week I was uh, confirmed or affirmed, I guess it would be, uh, and I'm now going to be known as uh, the America's chairman uh, for Crest. Uh, now they have three separate groups. There is a global component too. Uh, I'm focused here in the US, and anyone that'd be going to Black Hat or DEF CON next week, uh, there's a big Crest meeting actually happening on the 27th, and if you're a member company of Crest or would like to learn more, you're more than welcome to be a part of that. Uh, but Crest is um, uh, something I'll be spending a lot more of my time in. Uh, and I find that the reason why for me it's important, and for those that don't know, I'm also uh, prior military, uh, I really enjoy working with critical infrastructure because that's a lot of times where I think things make a difference. So um, what you'll be seeing, perhaps um, my activities be less and less in OWASP and be more and more in Crest. Uh, I think it goes without saying that I'm, I'm trying to follow a, a process here to help the industry be better. Uh, and I think a lot of the folks in the room uh, share some of those sentiments. Uh, you know, none of the people involved in OWASP are here to break things and uh, go to jail, right? That's not our, our focus. Um, so uh, trying to help do the, right, do, do, the, uh, do the right thing is always important. Um, there are some materials certainly available uh, online from Crest uh, that could provide good guidance, uh, templates, best practices, things, et cetera. Uh, and after, being, after reviewing them over the last six or seven months, um, there's been some revisions submitted by member companies uh, and there's been some new materials coming out. So as of the 27th, uh, there will be an America's website off crest.org uh, that'll have, I'm sorry, it's crest.com, uh, but it'll have uh, materials relative to Crest that'll be useful uh, in organizations looking for folks that do this. Now, there's approximately, I think, 47 um, organizations that subscribe to the Crest methodologies and approaches. Uh, and when you go through that, like any other audit, if you will, like uh, becoming a physician, uh, there is process, right? There's process that you have to adhere to and meet standards and testings and records control and data handling and all this other stuff. So when you work with um, you know, members of the Crest uh, organization, you'll see a lot of the same faces you've seen from the OWASP world. I was surprised over uh, how many of us were uh, involved in Crest, especially in uh, AppSec EU. Uh, that were, AppSec uh, Europe was our big conference a few weeks ago, um, that were you know, already existing members of Crest. So I was surprised to see that. Um, but the cool part is, I guess, is that you know, the industry continues to grow. Um, so that's sort of uh, a little personal and a little professional space. But um, you know, as we move forward, uh, you may have also noticed over the last few months, um, in November of last year, uh, and it is on the, the video streaming channel that you're probably gonna watch this on later, uh, there was a uh, presentation by me in November that spoke about what we're going to do with the foundation or uh, the chapter uh, in the next 12 months. Uh, and we, uh, we've just reached that sort of, that, that goal of being able to convert and being able to expand. Uh, what we've done over the last few months in particular has expanded the program. Uh, we've went from being focused only on open source to being able to drive innovation, education, hands-on training, reaching out to the community members, hacking charities. We've done a bunch of different things. Um, so we've definitely gone outside the rails of being a focused effort on only open source software, right? So we've done a lot. Uh, and I'd like to thank a lot of the volunteers and the people involved that actually made that possible because it's been a lot of work and it's been a lot of fun. But we are going to continue on. You will see um, some additional 
uh, changes uh, happening with how we're going to do some stuff next year. Um, there's conversations about doing some trainings and doing some more education, some more conferences like this. Uh, so if this forum is good for you, if you sort of like this sort of, uh, sort of uh, approach, that's again why we asked folks to put some, some data up on the boards here to kind of help us stay on track because I look at this as this is a community driven thing. And the community sort of gets together, figures out where they want to go, what they want to spend time on, and that's certainly what we focus on. There's been requests to do, hey, let's do hands-on forensic exercises, live fire stuff with law enforcement so we can understand what it's like to work with them before we have to call them. I think that's interesting. There's been, hey, let's do some coding workshops, hands-on stuff. There's also been, let's do some more seminars. So there's plenty of things to work on, but it really takes the people in the room to make it all happen, right? It's being a part of it and what you want to, what you want to focus on. So, so with that, um, I just wanted to give those quick updates. If there's any questions about OWASP Foundation in, in my last few months in the organization, I'm happy to uh, speak to it. But as of December 31st, uh, you know, I, I will no longer be uh, actively involved in, in the OWASP Foundation. Um, any questions? Great. Well, again, thanks for coming out. Uh, and I think there may be happy hour across the street. I'm not really sure where Natasha is. Um, somebody maybe grab her from the hallway? I want to find out if there is an official place. Sure. <laughs> um, hi. As you know, may know that I'm, I work for the Internet Society. I'm present local chapter. I just got an email today saying that uh, we've got 110 chapters around the world. We've got space, outer space special interest groups. That a, a cyber security special interest group within the Internet Society has just been granted its charter today. If you go to internetsociety.org, you join, it's free, then you go join a chapter, you'll find it there. The Internet Society hands out grants, large and small, for projects. Um, you know, we're dedicated to the open internet, and it would be a good home for anybody who's into this. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Billy, you want to speak a little bit about uh, ISACA or any other organizations? No? Okay. Anyone else here represent any other professional associations? Yeah? Question? I don't know if this is the first time you're announcing this uh, end of your, of your term, um, but I want to uh, thank you uh, for your years of service for OWASP. Thank you. Thanks. It's, been, it's, 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 it's certainly been fun. Uh, I have four kids. My oldest is 22, and it's always fun playing Battleship with him, uh, w literally, with uh, his Metasploit exploits. Uh, so he'll, you'll, you'll probably see him in, at the AppSec USA conference in Florida. Uh, he, he, uh, uh, he'll, he may be presenting. We will see. So again, thank you, and uh, we'll, we'll please look, you know, stay tuned to the, to the, uh, the meetup, and we'll talk more. Hi, Cindy. Want to talk? So I, I'm the uh, president of the ISC Squared New Jersey chapter, as well as the a founder of the OWASP uh, Central Jersey chapter. So, we, so if you're from Jersey or are interested in getting involved in the in the Jersey chapters, um, you know, just just let us know. We're always looking for places to hold our meetings, uh, good speakers, good topics, volunteers for uh, you know this, that, and the other. We have. Uh, tentatively planned uh, uh, a, a conference in October in the Trenton area with the New Jersey court system. So we're looking for some support on that, both from the sponsorship, the speakers. Uh, so, so if you're interested in, in that, you know, just let me know. Uh, I'll be around. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Just want to say thank you all for coming, and I hope that you really enjoy the program that we put together. It took a lot of hours to do the research to pull everybody together, and they, they had to do a lot of things to prepare. And um, I'd love to get your feedback. We're still going to be using the Meetup site, uh, but things might be changing in the future, so stay tuned. Um, we're also looking, we're going to be in this space again October 5th for, the, for this uh, joint conference um, that I can keep everybody posted that's on the list. And um, happy hour is moved. Um, to the beer authority. My friend was fired at the VR world, so we won't be doing it there. Uh, <laughs> if you do ever need to get in touch with me, just uh, find me on my website, natashapalak.com, and thank you. That's a wrap.